Jasmine and today I am back with another makeup palette series. Now if you guys are new to my channel and you're unfamiliar with this series, pretty much I take five palettes from a specific brand and I do a look using each of their palettes throughout the week. Now today I decided I wanted to extend that and do seven days for you guys because unfortunately due to COVID, a lot of online orders, not just with Shop Miss A, are just being delayed and unfortunately I'm unable to upload a Shop Miss A roundup review for this month. So to compensate, I'm bringing you guys this series using all seven of their 25 pan palettes. As always, I hope you guys all really enjoy this series. I hope you guys stay tuned to every single day and let's go ahead and get started with this bold look. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my base with this series in day one. I show you guys my entire base routine and it's going to follow suit with the rest of the days in this series. I'm not going to change it just so everything is really consistent. I'm going to go ahead and use the Shop Miss A No Pore Primer. Now this is actually going to be my first time testing this out. My orders have been coming in really slowly due to COVID so I'm being very patient and I'm going to use this time to really test out this primer so I could give you guys a good review during my Shop Miss A Roundup review. For the foundation today, I'm using their Satin Foundation. I have the shade Pure Beige. I haven't gotten my order of the Pro Wear Foundation just yet, but I did order it in the same shade. And as always, I will have my Shop Miss A Roundup review once I have everything in the mail, once I've tested everything out. The whole purpose of those videos are just so that I could place my order, get it in the mail, test it out, and then do a full review. I already have a review on this foundation on my channel, and I can confidently say that this satin foundation is one of my favorites from their website. It doesn't break me out, it's buildable coverage, and I love the fact that it's very lightweight. To highlight my skin, I'm gonna go into their concealer. This one is their liquid concealer in the shade Buff. And this one is actually really nice. I like the fact that it is in a squeezy tube because it controls how much I need to use. I'm also blending this into my skin with their Paw Paw Wonder Blender. On the high points of my face, I'm gonna go ahead and set it with powder. I'm using their Perfect Press Powder in the shade Banana. You guys know this is my holy grail ride or die Shop Miss A product. I've gone through an entire pan of this and I'm going to continue to repurchase it until the day I die. With the Wonder Brow in the shade Dark Brown, I'm gonna go ahead and sculpt my brow. Usually for my preference, I do like a sculpted brow look. I feel like to me, it makes me feel beautiful. So if you don't like that, then you'll probably really like their brow pencils. Today's eye look is going to be a little basic with just a pop of color. Now today's palette of choice is going to be the Vanity palette, which is actually the palette that I least like out of this entire collection. Now if you watch my palettes under $20 video, I mentioned a little bit about how I didn't really love the cool tone aspect of this palette. I just felt like it's not quite me. It's not the color scheme that I am on the lookout for. These types of purples are a little too cool tone for my liking, but I thought that it'd be fun to actually incorporate a pop of color into this look. So I wanted to gauge this look around a brown smoky eye. I know that sounds really boring, but I wanted to incorporate purple as much as possible in this look without being a little too dramatic or too vampy. Is that the word that I want to use? Eerie, a little mysterious. I wanted it to just be a little bit more fun and vibrant. So first and foremost, we are going to take the white in the palette and we are just going to tap this on our eyelids so it creates a blank canvas. And this is just going to allow everything to pop out a little bit better because of the white base. There's only one light tan in the palette and I'm using that here on my eyelid as a transition shade to just kind of warm up the eye look because all of the other browns in the palette are just super dark and intense. So I just wanted to add something here that'll just be a mid-tone shade. But quite honestly, this kind of just matches my skin tone, so... <laughs> okay, you know what? Because the browns are so dark, I think I am gonna go into a matte purple. This is just a medium mid-tone purple and I'm going to pop this over that cream shade. I just felt like it was too light. So hopefully that this is just a little bit darker and creates more of a transition that I'm looking for. Now we're gonna go into the dark brown and I'm going to tap it on first before I blend it out. Oh, this looks a little bit more gray. It's okay, it's fine. It'll all turn out great in the end. Just trust the process. 
You know what's actually so funny though? I am more of a person who loves warm tones, but my sister is actually someone who prefers only cool tones. So all her eyeshadows, her contour shades, they have to be as cool as possible. And right over the edge here, I'm just going to sweep back and forth and blend the shadow together. Now I want this to just be a little bit more pigmented, so I'm going to take that on a eyeshadow brush. This is a Juno brush. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow brushes of all time. I feel like this reigns superior. This is the ES06 brush. And I'm just taking that matte and just patting it all over the eyelid. And then blending the edges. Okay, my camera stopped recording, but I was just talking about how this is the darkest that the darkest shade in the palette will go. And although I took it all the way to my brow bone, I want this look to be a little bit more different. I don't want this to be necessarily wearable. I mean, to some people it can be wearable, but I want it to be a little, just a little bit avant-garde. So I'm taking this dusty light lavender shade and applying it into my brow bone just to brighten things up a little bit. So with my eyeliner, I'm using the Shop Missy Buttercream in the shade Sprinkles. And this is a beautiful shimmery purple and I'm just gonna do a very bold wing with this eyeliner. So I ended up doing a graphic liner. And I'm honestly really loving this because instead of just ending it towards the middle of my eye, I extended it all the way into the inner corner, which I think is a little bit different than my normal graphic liner. I do wanna note that because I did a light lavender in my brow bone, it kinda casts a shadow right here where it just looks super dark. So I'm trying to figure out ways to eliminate that, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just try and complete this eye look to be just a little bit more glam. So I'm also going to take this buttercream into the waterline as well. And then I'm applying a purple eyeshadow on the bottom here. That's looking real delicious. I'm just, what do I do there? I'm gonna add the cream white eyeshadow, the matte, and see if I could just brighten it a little bit. I can't cover it with any eyeshadow, so I'm gonna cover it with eyeliner. Seems about right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this eye off camera and then let's go ahead and finish off the rest of the look. For lashes, I'm gonna do something a little bit more natural. So I'm using the Shot Missy Lashes in the style Amanda. And I'm actually going to be applying this with my Silly George Liner Bond Lash Glue. Now this is a eyeliner type lash glue, so it's in an eyeliner applicator. And today I'm using the clear one. With that same light lavender shade that I popped into my brow bone, I'm actually gonna take that into the inner corner just to brighten everything up. The eyes are looking so good, so I wanna go ahead and move on into the face. Now, I wanted to utilize some of their blushes for my cheeks, and I'm gonna use their Perfect Blush in the shade Fino, and this is actually gonna go into my bronzer areas. And then for my blush, I'm choosing a little bit of a peachy tone with the shade Dandy. And as a little side note, I think that their Faux Mink brush set, the all black ones, are my absolute favorite as far as the eyes and the face is concerned. And with that same shade that we used in our inner corners and brow bone, I'm actually gonna take that as a highlighter just so it ties everything in. And because I have a yellow skin tone, purples usually look a little ashy on my skin. So I'm only focusing it in the center so that when I take photos, it kind of just looks a little bit more bright as opposed to just really contrasting against my skin tone. For my lips today, I'm using the Kat Von D liquid lipstick in the shade Aisha, which I feel like will match the eyeliner perfectly. And then finally, to set everything in place, I'm gonna use the Milani Make It Last Matte Finish Spray. And just like that, you guys, we are completed with day one. I'm super excited to continue on this series. This look took a really wild turn. I had a vision in my mind. This look was going to start off really natural, just a pop of color. And then we ended up with a super crazy graphic liner and then a super bold lip, which 
I'm not mad at at the end of the day, but at the same time, this is not where I wanted to go. Uh, but I love the look nonetheless. And if you guys love my Shop Miss A videos, don't forget to shop via my affiliate link located in the description box below. It's always encouraged, it's never forced. As always, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for day two. Bye! Peace out, Girl Scouts. Thank you.